Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Sam Kwok here, one of the Kwok Brothers, and welcome back to your next stimulus check update. This is August 9th. 2020 Sunday and here is your next stimulus check update. Now, I normally don't make videos on Sundays, but this is way too big not to cover and not to update you guys as far as what's happening. President Trump signs new executive orders enacting four major updates to the stimulus scoreboard and I'll give you guys a full breakdown. What does it mean? What is it going to happen? And what are the consequences? Let's go and break it down in this video. Now, the very first item that we need to cover is the unemployment benefit of $600 a week, which is no longer $600 a week. President Trump just signed an executive order directing $400 a week of an unemployment benefit, which 75% will come from the federal government and the states are asked to pitch in 25%. So we're gonna go and update the scoreboard and change this number to $400 a week. And we're gonna put a green star on it making sure you guys understand that this is an executive order. Now, a couple of questions that you probably have, which is where's the money coming from and how long is the extension? First of all, funding for most of the executive orders that President Trump signed is coming from the FEMA fund, which is generally used for natural disasters like hurricanes. So right now there's $44 billion in the FEMA fund that will be reappropriated to, to cover some of the executive order funding. So right now what's gonna happen is the extension of $400 a week unemployment benefit will last till December 6th or if the funds dropped to $25 billion. Again, there's $44 billion right now in FEMA. If it drops to $25 billion, then the $400 a week unemployment check will stop or it lasts till December 6th. So that's gonna last till about December 6th or whenever the funds hit $25 billion. Now the number two item as far as what President Trump signed in as an executive order is the deferment of payroll taxes. Now the key word is defer, which means that it's delaying. So it's not forgiving, it's not going away, it's simply deferring, which means that some point later down the road, Congress either has to make an appropriation to either forgive the, the, the deferred payroll taxes or individuals would have to pay the payroll taxes somehow, whether it's done through uh, tax returns or it's done through a, some sort of repayment plan. We don't know. It's simply a band-aid at this point what's happening to the payroll taxes. So here's what it means for you as far as a payroll tax deferment goes. Starting September 1st through December 31st, 2020, every $100 that you make on your paycheck, you would earn about $7.50 more. So payroll tax is about 7.5 to 7.6%. So for every $100 that you earn, you don't have to pay $7.50, which essentially you get to keep in your pocket, ends up being more money for you at the end of the day. Also to mention, the payroll tax cut is for individuals that are making $100,000 or less. So if you're making more than $100,000 in a year, you will still end up paying the payroll taxes, but if you make less than $100,000, the payroll tax deferment will be in effect for you, which means you get to keep more money as you earn your paycheck. So we're gonna go and add a green star to the payroll tax cut because that is part of the executive order. Now the third major item that President Trump signed on as an executive item is the student loan deferment. Now the student loan will be deferred to December 31st at 0% interest and if you have a federally backed student loan right now, you don't have to make any payments till December 31st. Now, my general suggestion coming from my own perspective is that if you have the ability to make payments on your student loan, I strongly encourage you to do so because every dollar that you put in your student loan right now is going to be principal because right now all federally backed student loans are at 0% interest. Because if you have a federally backed student loan right now, it's at 0% interest, therefore none of your payment will go towards interest. Every dollar that you put into the student loan right now will count towards the balance reduction. So if you have the means to make payments for your student loans, I strongly encourage you guys to do so because every dollar will count towards principal as well as help you guys save money on interest and save time in paying off your student loans. So that's another big item that President Trump signed on as far as executive order. Now as part of the executive order, what's clearly missing is an executive order for you to go and smash the like button on this video, turn that like button to blue, help us out with our YouTube algorithm. And I normally don't make videos on Sunday, so definitely go smash the like button for the extra effort. Now the fourth major thing is the eviction moratorium 
So what does that mean? Well, eviction moratorium is a temporary eviction ban on any housing or multifamily that is being financed by federally backed mortgages. So if you own a multifamily apartment building or if you own single family or two to four units and it's being financed by a mortgage that's backed by federal government, then there will be an eviction moratorium, eviction ban, you, as a landlord, will not be able to file an eviction for not payment from your tenants. And for my landlords watching this, I know you guys are grumbling and you guys are not happy about it, but that is executive order signed by President Trump. Now, for how long, we're not entirely sure, but the CARES Act did spell out a 120-day eviction moratorium, and we will most likely see a same provision for President Trump's executive orders. So 120 days is about four months, so pretty much to the end of the year, we may see an eviction moratorium, an eviction ban. Now, if your state or your local government already has an eviction moratorium, that's also in effect as well, on top of a federally mandated eviction moratorium. So keep that in mind, it's happening, and we have to live with it. So overall, those are all the executive orders that President Trump signed. The unemployment benefit of $400 a week, an eviction moratorium, payroll tax deferment, not a cut, and also a extension of the student loan deferment, which was set to expire September, but now individuals now have till December 31st when their student loan will be at 0% interest and they do not have to make any payments on the student loans temporarily to December 2020. Now, the question that's floating around right now is, can the president really sign an executive order enacting some of these provisions as we're talking about it? Now, the big item that's being challenged and will probably be challenged is the payroll tax deferment because the current argument is that the president cannot make any changes to the tax laws by his executive order. It has to go through Congress. So that could very much be challenged through the court system. We have to keep on seeing what's going to happen and we have to pay attention to whether the executive orders will stand constitutionally. Also, the question of how well these executive orders will be funded also came into play. And just like what I mentioned earlier with the unemployment benefit of $400 a week, President Trump will reappropriate funding from FEMA to fund the unemployment benefit of $400 a week. And we talked about that already. But in order for the president to create more funding or to print new checks, it has to go through Congress. Congress has the pocketbooks for the government. The president does not. Obviously, that's a separation of power issue. If the president had access to the checkbook of the United States government, that would be a huge, huge abuse of power. But you can see here that there's separation of power, so President Trump cannot create new stimulus checks. That is why we're not seeing the $1,200 direct payment as part of the executive order portfolio because that requires additional printing and funding, which requires Congress permission to make it happen. So right now, what President Trump can do is sign an executive order on payroll tax deferment, eviction moratorium, unemployment benefit of $400 a week till December 6th-ish, and a student loan deferment. But all this could be easily challenged because right now the Democrat senators and Democrat lawmakers are not happy. They're basically calling this a big show or a shenanigan to make it look like President Trump is doing something for the American people. But you can't blame the guy for doing what he said he was going to do, right? He did say if there's no agreement by Friday, he will use the executive powers to enact some of these provisions as he's talked about. I mean, the Democrat lawmakers pretty much saw this coming when President Trump said this for like a whole entire week. And what's interesting is that some of the Republican senators are also disagreeing with the president's executive orders. So we all have to pay attention to see what's going to happen with the executive order. Will it be challenged by the court system? And right now, it seems like it will. And how the Congress react to this? Will they create a new action item or pass a bill that's going to limit the president's executive order? We all have to watch. So that means you got to subscribe to our channel and stay updated and stay tuned because I will continue to update you guys. So definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification icon for more updates. And tomorrow being Monday, I'll come back to update you guys as far as what's happening today. So definitely stay tuned. More to come, and I'll update you guys tomorrow morning.